So I wanted to look at number 12 on your um, quantitative energy flow diagrams worksheet. Uh, this is sort of different than uh, what you've seen. So uh, let's do an energy flow diagram. It says a baseball traveling at 30 meters per second moves a fielder's glove backwards 35 centimeters when the ball is caught. All right, so I might as well convert my 35 centimeters first. Um, 35 centimeters, um, 100 centimeters are in one meter. So that means that I'm talking about 0.35 meters. Um, so a baseball mass is, okay, so that's good. The mass is already in kilograms, 0.14 kilograms. Okay, that sounds like a baseball. It is traveling at 30 meters per second, and it moves into a fielder's glove, and the glove moves backwards uh, when the ball is caught. What is the average force exerted by the glove on the ball, and what was the average force by the ball on the glove? Cool question. All right. So for an energy flow diagram, let's have the beginning moment in time. Here's the person. Here's their glove. <laughs> Here's their glove. Okay. And there's the ball. So the ball's moving really fast. Okay. And I'll say this is the instant just before ball hits glove. I'm doing that so that all the energy is stored in the motion of the ball. It's all in E kinetic. I'm doing this, I'm choosing this moment in time carefully. All right. In the end, I'm going to say that the ball has stopped, okay? okay there's the guy's glove again. <laughs> there's the ball. I know it's a really funny glove. <laughs> ball has stopped, okay? And this glove, so I make this zero. Right? Actually, I should move that over. Sorry, I'm going to try that again. So, if I make this zero right here, I measure the glove is actually moved back from catching the ball. It's moved 0.35 meters, 35 centimeters. It's like that far which totally makes sense. Um, I guess you'd have to use a high-speed camera to measure that. And we'll make the system the ball. Okay. Now, let's do our EG plus EK plus elastic in the beginning and in the end. And there may have been a small height change, but I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to say that the height of the ball, although my picture doesn't show it, I'm going to say that there is no change in height. I am not worrying about it. So EG is gone. And that's an approximation we're making. Okay. Because um, over, over this 35 centimeters, the ball hasn't really fallen very far, I'm guessing. I don't think... It's going to be a huge amount of error in our calculations. Uh, I don't even think it would be a small source of error. It's going to be a really small source of error. Um, but it depends how fast the ball is moving horizontally, of course. Um, now, our, our system is not like a rubber band, bungee cord, so there's no elastic to worry about. The ball stops in the end, so there's no EK in the end. So there's no energy in the end. So energy has to leave our system. Uh, huh. And it's leaving due to a force, okay? 
So between these moments in time, there's a force that's actually um, the force of what glove on ball, right? But the ball's movement between these moments of time. So let me move this uh, out of here. So between these moments in time, during that time interval, the force due to the glove on the ball is like to the right, while the ball is moving to the left. So the displacement for the ball is in the opposite direction as the force due to the glove on the ball. That's why the work due to glove, let me write this out. Uh, I don't want you to confuse the W here with weight of an object. So I'm going to write it out a little better. So the work, the work, <laughs> the work due to glove, the work that the glove we say it we say it a little differently we say it's the work that the glove does on the ball and you'll notice energy the glove is taking energy out of the ball um, the kinetic energy in the beginning leaves through work in this case now we're actually ignoring <coughs> energy dissipating we're seeing all the energy leaves the ball due to this force of the glove on the ball. So the work that the glove does on ball. And we're going to ignore energy dissipated. Okay? I better write that in blue so you can actually see it. So during this time interval, we are actually ignoring dissipating energy. Now, the, the glove heats up, and that's not playing into our calculations. Um, we're only considering the energy that leaves the ball's motion due to the force of the glove on the ball, okay? And your equation, your equation, therefore, is going to say E kinetic in the beginning, sorry, Uh, plus work has to equal zero. All right? And we can actually calculate work. We just draw a F delta X graph. And I suppose we're assuming that the force due to the... The, the clue in the, in the problem was it says, what's the average force? That's a clue that... We're talking about, we're going to assume that the force due to the glove on the ball is constant. In real life, that's not going to be true. Um, not even close. But we're going to pretend. So the average force, which we're saying is a constant force of the glove on the ball, in the direct, the amount that the ball moves was 0.35, right? So 0.35 meters. And do we know, we don't know the, the average force. That's what we're looking for. So what we're going to have to do is, is use our equation for kinetic energy. All right? So we're going to have to go 1 half m uh, speed squared. And we know the mass of the ball. We know the speed of the ball uh, before it actually hit the glove. Um, let's see what it is. 30 meters per second and 0.14 kilograms. Okay, so we got one half uh, 0.14 kilograms, and the speed is 30. And this is the speed at the moment before contact with the glove, right? And then this value should be equal to work, which should be equal to area 
wonder RF versus delta x graph. Okay, so you can go ahead and calculate that. Um, so it's going to be 15 times 30. 15, whoops, 15 times 30. <laughs> whoops, let's try that again. Okay, I'll just multiply it out. 0.5 instead of 1 half times 0.14 times 30 times 30. What do I get? 63 joules? Okay, so the work ends up being 63 joules of energy is our work, and therefore 63 joules must equal my average force times my 0.35 meters, right? So my average force of the glove on the ball, and this is the force of glove on ball, but it should be the same as the force, and it should be exactly the same, but in the opposite direction, as the ball exerting force on a glove. Um, which law is this? Well, you should know that this is Newton's third law. Anyway, it's going to be, either way, it's 63 joules divided by 0.35 meters. So uh, let's see what that is. Um, just take 63, which we just, just did. Here's our 63, divided by 0.35. What do I get? I get 180. So it's an average force of 180 newtons. Um, that seems a little small. Anyway, there it is, and um, hope you liked it. I think I think my uh, calculations were wrong. Let me just check that. Sixty-three joules has got to be too small. Um, point five times point one four times thirty times thirty. Well, I'm okay. Divided by 0.35 is 180. Okay. So there you go. Um, hope you like the problem. Um, have a good day. Thanks for watching.